okay so today we discuss about DACP okay number one topic we have so okay let's start with DACP okay let's start with the paint and then we can start with it So I just open my paint first. Uh, I must paint. Now oh, let's start. Okay. What is DHCP? So what we call what is DHCP? So DHCP. Uh, is a is a rule or services in server rules okay fine this is the number one point you can go for that DHCP is a role or a server uh, it is a server it is a role okay what is this it is it is used to provide TCP IP configuration. TCP IP configuration to its it is used to provide TCP configuration dynamically to its clients. To its clients. Okay, now what is the meaning of over there? TCP IP configuration. Uh, why I'm not telling IP address? TCP IP configuration is it's it's complete configuration. Like it, in that we have IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS, everything. Okay. So whatever you can uh, configure in the in the scope, okay, it provides everything. That's why we call TCP IP configuration. Full configuration they provide you. And after that we have a dynamically. The word dynamically means that uh, it has some process. When we uh, provide IP address or TCP IP configuration to the client. Uh, between DACP server and client, we have some process. Okay, that process, the process is running. Some process is running. That's why we can call dynamically over there. In auto, uh, we have two terms: dynamically and automatically. Dynamically means when we have a process based uh, IP address delivering. Automatically means when we when we go when there is a no process, only IP address is given automatically. So. <clears throat> I let you know. So these are the two major statements of DSCP. DSCP is a role or services in server OS. Okay, it is used to provide TCP configuration dynamically to its clients. Okay, number third, it is used in uh, work group as well as domain network. But wherever you can use, you can use it with DSCP. In servers, you can use anywhere, whatever environment we have. Okay, so uh, this is what we have uh, the DSCP concepts. So we have three statements over there. Okay, number fourth, uh, it is used DHCP protocol. When you use DHCP, DHCP the name protocol is working. Okay, uh, so uh, so like this we have uh, DHCP protocol also. It's working on that. Okay, so uh, if you're talking about uh, the process, like imagine this is my uh, how DHCP works. So you can say that we can see uh, how DHCP works. Okay, so uh, how we can go for that? Like imagine uh, this this is one of my uh, DHCP server okay and we have a client over there okay let's connect with the cable or switch or something called media okay and uh, this is uh, what we are uh, this is what we have a DHCP server and we have a DHCP client okay like this so if if uh, one first we have we have uh, this is a we have four types of Four type process you can say that the, the process when DHCP server provides the IP address or TCP configuration to the client, the process names DORA. Okay, D O R A. DORA. That means or you can say that discover offer request 
and acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Okay, here are the four process. When DCP server provides the IP address to the clients, okay, that process is known as Dura. So uh, uh, it starts with it starts with the uh, discovering part. Okay, the process starts with the discovering part first. Your uh, first what happens first uh, the DCP client discovered the DCP server with the help of MAC address. Okay, so first uh, what DCP client do? It sends the uh, it sends the broadcast packet to the uh, to to the network. If he finds any DHCP server with the help of MAC address, okay. So over there, the first steps are done by our uh, DHCP server itself for MAC address. Let's go for MAC address. MAC address. Okay, fine. After that, what happens? Then, uh, if if DHCP server listens his request, okay, he ha uh, he he offers the packet. Like he tells that okay, we have a package or, or when a dcp server listens the request he, he tells okay i am here I, ha I have so and so 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 uh you can see that uh, uh ip addresses and everything i have okay so uh, uh offer then uh, dcp gives offer then the uh, dcp kind again request to to for the uh, for the ip address that okay i am fine please give me the uh um uh, ip addresses and then they go give the Acknowledgement. After receiving the package, okay, DHCP client gives the acknowledgement to the server that okay, I receive all the package which you delivered to me. So this is the uh, process called Dora in uh, in DHCP servers. Okay. So uh, if you're talking about uh, the IP address, whatever whatever IP address they given, okay, it has only only for eight days. Okay, by default it's for eight days only. Whatever IP address, uh, IP address DCP server gives to, to the client. Okay, by default it's for eight days only. Okay, the minimum uh, the minimum day we have it's uh, it's you can say that hours or minutes. Okay, the minimum if you according to day the day is one day only, and uh, and the maximum one we can call we have triple nine days. Okay, in the servers. Okay, in servers we have another option also. We have a unlimited. We have a uh, uh, unlimited days option also. If you want to give the permanent IP address, then we can go for unlimited days also. Okay, fine. I still remember. Yesterday we did something that we specified the day. In your in your routers. No, here. Yeah, uh, we uh, we uh, yesterday we go for that. No, we configure uh, DHCP server okay. for WDS. Okay. Yeah, WDS. Now for WDS, you can figure W uh, DHCP server. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we uh, so that is the overview of DHCP server, which we did is uh, means uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have this eight days for minimum. Minimum is one day, maximum is triple nine days, and we have the unlimited option also in servers. If you want to go for unlimited, you can go unlimited also. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the the things we have. So after this process, DHCP DHCP server successfully gives. IP address the DCP client. Okay, fine. Now after this, what happens? After this things, we can say that uh, after this, what happens? After this, uh, there is one pro more process. The process name is uh, rebinding process. You can say that it's a rebinding process. Rebinding process. Or you can say that it's a uh, rebinding, or you can say that it's a renewal process. Rebinding or renewal, renewal process. Okay, renewal means like if you want to renew the IP addresses. Okay, so what happens in that? If you go for this, so what happens after uh, completing the uh, means when we when you complete eight uh, means you, fifty percent time. The first step goes to my client. It when we complete uh, fifty percent of time. Okay, like imagine I have um, uh, my server gives eight days only. Okay, after completing four days, DCP client sends one message to DCP server that please renew my IP address. Okay, after like, after completing fifty percent of time, fifty okay. percent of time, we can say that least time, fifty percent of least time. It sends uh, uh, one uh, message to DCP server that please renew my IP address. Okay. If you imagine that at that time is not up or something like this, so second step is goes to 87.5%. Uh, this is the second step. 
of release time. Okay, fine. So this is the two. Uh, this is the two things: fifty percent and eighty-seven point five percent. Okay, still it's not not listening. Okay, after that what happens? Your eight days is completed, and what happens? Your your IP addresses expire. Okay, and then we have a uh, a PIPA option is there. A PIPA, a PIPA known as automatic private IP address. Okay, it gives you the range. The range is one sixty nine dot two two five four dot x dot x something dot something. Okay, like this. This is the range. A PIPA. Okay, so when so when you are seeing something there that we have we have uh, 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 any 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 system takes this IP address, it means yeah. So with the help of this IP address, they again renew. They did again try to uh, discover the JCP, and then they again go for Dora, and then they go for rebinding like this. Okay, so this is the process where how DSCP works in that. Okay, this is the basic basic process of DSCP servers. Okay, now if we're talking about uh, uh, the DSCP server in servers, so we have uh, two waves. Two uh, means we have two things more in servers. So number one, uh, we have DHCP authorization. DHCP authorization. Authorization means like if if your DHCP works with AD, okay. So we need to we need we need DHCP authorization. Okay, if we if we don't authorize my DHCP with the AD, okay, so DHCP server is not providing the proper IP address if in my domain. Yeah, if if I am not authorized my DHCP server with AD, okay, so my DHCP server is not able to provide the IP address to a particular domain control or to a particular domain network. Okay, if you if your DHCP works on work group, so there is no authorization cases there. There is no AD over there. Okay, DHCP authorization only works in domain network. Understood? Okay, so we need to we need to authorize DHCP server. Okay, to provide IP address in a specific domain network. Okay. Fine. So this is the what this is what the DHCP authorization is used. So we need to authorize DHCP server to provide IP address in a specific domain network. Okay. Fine. So this is what we have DHCP. It's a basics overview of DHCP server. Okay. Now we can go for now. Uh, we can go for other things. So in that we have a now we are able to understand how DHCP server works. We have Dora process in DHCP server when they provide the IP address. Lease process when they renew the IP address. Okay, one step is also there. Like imagine if if you if you go beyond this means if you go in this this one. Like imagine if I have two DHCP servers. So in that case, what happens? Like imagine if I have two DHCP servers. Like in this. Like imagine we have two DHCP servers now. This is the DHCP server one. This is DHCP server two. And these two DHCP servers are connected with the client also. So like this, you can see that. This is the client, and it's connected with the two both the, both other both DHCP servers. This is the DHCP server one, DHCP server one, okay, and this is DHCP server two, okay. And now this is my DHCP client. You can see that. Okay. Now Dura process is going on. Okay. So now they both are they both Gives their package to the client because client works on broadcast. So uh, uh, when 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 client do broadcast, so both the both uh, both servers are listening their broadcast and both servers providing their IP addresses to the client. Now what happens on these cases? One step is there. The step name is DHCP selection. Okay. Now DHCP selection works on on which basis? DHCP selection works on uh, if, like, imagine it's it's go for first come first preferences. Okay, it it works on works works on FNF first come first. Okay, first come first first preferences. First come first means uh, like imagine if uh, DHCP server one sends the uh, a packet, then DHCP server two also sends the packet, but DHCP server one packet uh, uh, received first by the client. So it takes it accept this packet and it 
reject this one. He sends the he sends the acknowledgement that okay, I receive your packet. He sends the acknowledgement to server two that I receive packets from server one. I don't want to I don't want your packet. Thank you very much. Like this. Understood. So DSCP selection works when we have a multiple DSCP servers in the in the network. Okay, in that case. Okay, so uh, this is the this is also uh, works when we have a uh, multiple DSCP servers. So we have five five type steps. We can say that. Okay. After this, what we need to do, we need to understand two or four more things. We are, I already told you DSCP is authorization. Okay, authorization means if my DSCP server not authorized with the domain, so they are not able to provide the IP address. Okay. <coughs> Okay, now we talking about the DHCP scopes. The other option we have is DHCP scopes. So if we're talking about in servers, so we have DHCP scope is what it is used to provide the range. It is used to set the range. range of IP addresses and what IP address you want to provide okay range or you can say that it's a pool okay which we need to provide in the network or deploy in the network or allocate in the net network okay Understood? Fine. Now, uh, uh, if, if you're talking about the DCP servers, in servers we have three types of scopes. Uh, we have three uh, types of types of scopes. Scopes and DHCP. DHCP server. Okay. Number one, we have simple. You can call it just only scope or simple scope. Okay. Where we can provide uh, IPv4 addresses, numbers IPv4 and IPv6 both. Okay. Number second, we have a, a multicast scope. Okay. Yeah. Scope is scope is for IPv4 and IPv6. We can provide both the IP addresses. We have two different different ranges. IPv4 is a separate scope and IPv6 is a separate scope. Okay. Now we have a multicast scope. Multicast scope works on uh, when we when we using class D IP addresses. Like yeah, when multicasting means one to many. One to many means when like imagine uh, if I'm using somewhere else somewhere uh, somewhere class D IP addresses where we use multicasting. So in that case, we can use multicast scope. With the help of multicast scope, we can provide only class D IP addresses, not class ABC. Okay. The last one we have uh, super scope. Super scope. Super scope. Understood. Multicast IP. Multicast scope. Yeah. So super scope. Multiple scopes. You can say that. With the help of one super scope, we can manage multiple scopes. Super scope merge. Yeah, I just tied it over there. What is super scope? It is used to merge multiple multiple scopes. Okay, we can say that uh, uh, with the help of super scope. We can manage mul multiple scopes in one location. Okay. We can manage multiple scopes in one. We can manage multiple scopes with one scope. You can say that. Okay, like imagine I have multiple scopes. I can get scope one, scope two, scope three, scope four. I have different three to four scopes. Okay, now I want to manage with the help of only one scope. Okay, so we can go for super scope. Those scopes has to be the same, like if we equip before, it has to be the same IPv4 different scopes. Yeah, like imagine I have multiple IPv4 scopes. Okay. 
okay i have different different subnet scopes you can see that like one is 10.1.1.1 10.2.2.2 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 like this okay so we have multiple scopes okay so if i want to manage all those multiple scopes with the help of one <coughs> scope then we can use super scope okay so we have three types of scopes in dacp servers okay fine so uh, <coughs> this is what we have a scopes okay so in scope we can we can define everything like uh, ip address range subnet mask exclude range Okay, right. In, in the scopes, we have an, uh, one thing also that we can call uh, the next, we can call it the next, we can call it DHCP exclude range. RNV exclude range. Now, what is the meaning of exclude range over there? Exclude range is like imagine I can give a scope uh, between 192, 168, 1.12, 1.100. Okay. Now I want to exclude some IP addresses in the, in the, in the present scope. I want that, okay, uh, means uh, my scope range is imagine 192.168.1.100. Okay, now I want to exclude between this, I want to exclude 192.168.1.10 to 1.20. Okay, so it means my DSCP server is not able to provide these IP addresses in this present scope okay so exclude range is used to exclude the IP addresses okay and after that we have a reserve also DHCP reservation we can reserve the IP addresses also with the help of MAC address to a specific IP address like I, I tell that 192 1.90 uh, is the I want to give to give to my uh, server one imagine so I, I need to I need to map this uh, uh, IP address with the MAC address. Okay, so it means what? When my server one uh, uh, means asks for IP address, so it's all all uh, it's uh, it's always gives the gives you this this IP address. Okay, understood. <coughs> okay. Now another one we have a DSCP options. DSCP options. Uh, I'm trying to name Which one? In, in routers? Yeah, we, we, we do it even on routers. Yeah, you do it in routers also. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely, definitely. Yeah. So now, what is the meaning? What is DSCP options? In options, what we can configure? We can configure like imagine. Uh, right now, I configured one range. Uh, I configured one pool in the DSCP servers. Okay. Now what happens now after after getting the pools, I have some uh, DNS or router addresses also in my network. I want to I want to add those addresses in my uh, in my range also in my pool also. I created a pool, but in that time I'm not defining those the uh, DNS and uh, router addresses because that time there is no, there is no DNS and router addresses in my network. But after I getting the pool, what happens in some time or some days? Uh, my DNS servers and router addresses also in my network now. Now I'm, I'm placing the one router and I'm placing the DNS servers also in my in my network. Now what I want to do, I want that okay with the help. Uh, I want to add those router and DNS servers address in the present pool which I already created. Okay, so with the help of DSCP option, I can do that. Okay, we can add routers and DSCP servers, DNS servers, and so many servers addresses are, are there. Means like if I get it right, like before when you created the pool, yeah, the DNS server API address and for the router not part of the pool, yeah, and after something like that, I yeah, you want to add those, uh, uh, you want to, you want that part of the pool also. So because uh, when when uh, DSCP server provides the IP address, you want that okay, router and DNS servers address also delivered delivered by the DSCP server. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, we can use. DSCP options. So they must be in the same range, like they must be in the same class. Of yeah, range. exactly, of course. Okay, fine. So this is what we have. Okay, so so uh, in that case also we can define the the DSCP options. So in DSCP options we can define what we can define uh, DNS DNS server addresses. Okay, uh, router addresses. Okay, and lots more. Okay, I just give you only some examples. Okay, so we have uh, so many things also. We can provide so many so many server IP addresses also. Okay, fine. Uh, we can define static route also if we have. 
okay uh, if we, we can define a least time also over there least time like be, before i can go for eight days now i want to change my least time so we can go for with the help of uh, this okay uh, we can we can go for uh, we can define renewal time also okay renewal uh, time also so we have so many things to define in the acp options okay fine so these are the these are some uh, uh, you can see that's our words so i can change the renewal time yeah you can change the renewal time also so i can say like after 40% of the time like I have the DHP server has to renew. Yeah, you can say that. Like you can say that okay after four days or my least time is eight days, but after four days it's a new the IP address. Okay, like this. And uh, uh, we have we have we have changed you can say that uh, domain name also DNS domain D O M A and domain name also. Like imagine uh, previously I'm using work group, my DHP server now I'm becoming a domain, so I need to give the domain also. Okay, so like this. So we have so many options are in DSCP options. Understood this? Cool. Okay. Yeah. Now after that, uh, <clears throat> we can define over there PXC boot options also. You remember PXC? Yesterday we you do this PXC. Yeah. P PXC. PXC. Boot, boot. Yeah, pre-executable environment. Yeah. Hey, one is PE and one is PXC. Yeah. Two things are there. Okay. So PXC works on uh, port number 60. DSCP port 60. 60. 60, 60, Before, actually, if you're talking about the port numbers of DSCP, so it it, it works on 67, 68. We have two ports. Yeah. Okay. So if you go for DSCP, I'm sorry. If you go for uh, DHCP uh, server or client ports, okay. DSCP client and server ports. So it's around uh, 67, 68, something like 67 and 68, like this. Okay. Now, if you want, if you want, if you want, you want to work. Uh, you want that? Okay. I, I, I want to work my DCP server on uh, with PXC, PXC in moment. Okay. So in that case, DCP uh, with you can say that with PXC, the port number is 60. In that case, it means when we are going to, when we are going to use uh, DCP with with WDS, it works on port number 60. Understood. Changes number. Yeah, it changes in number. Pre-boot execution, you can say that. You can call it. it's pre-boot execu uh, execution. Okay, in in, in the ACP option also, uh, uh, the option option number is 60. You can say that. So we mention over there. Okay, you need to work on option number 60. Okay, it go for pre-boot execution client. Okay, if my if my DCP server works on WDS, in that case we can go for like this. Okay, now uh, <clears throat> these are the options you can configure in in my DACP server. Understood this? Okay. Okay. Now the next concept, the very good concept, if you're talking about the DHCP server, it's uh, relay agent. DHCP relay agent. Yeah, agent. I think you heard this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I <love> that. <laughs> <coughs> DCP agent. Everything become clear. Hmm. Now see, the the problem of DSCP is like if you're talking about the DSCP problem. The DSCP problem is that if you have multiple subnets, okay. If you have multiple subnets in my in my network, like imagine I have divided into network into four subnets, okay. HR, sales, finance, marketing, yeah. subnets. You know subnets. G S C M. <laughs> VLSM, VLSM, FLSM, CIDR, CIDR. I think you heard about CIDR. Okay, when we slash something, something slash host uh, number, or you can say that. Okay, so yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, uh, VLSM, VLSM, Okay, so uh, if you're talking about the DSCP relation, first we understand what is. Uh, uh, subnet so subnet you know that the division of network is known as subnet okay so like imagine i have some number of subnets like 10.0.0.0 something slash 8 is my subnet okay then after that we have 10.1.1.1 something slash uh, slash 9 you can say that we have so going to subnet then slash dot 10.10 dot, 10 dot, i'm not sorry and 2.2.2.2 dot, 2 dot, 2 dot, 2, it's working on slash 10 like this okay so now what happens <clears throat> if we're talking about the dcp server so at the at a, at a, at the same time DHCP server not works on multiple subnets. 
Understood? Like imagine in this my range is in this subnet my range is 10.0.0.1 to 100. Imagine. This is the range which I are use in this subnet. Okay. In this we are using like imagine 10. Uh, I'm sorry 1.1.1 to something about 10. 1.1.1. Uh, something about 20. You can say that we are using this range in this. Okay. And then after that we are using this in uh, 10. Dot uh, 2.2. I'm sorry, 2.2.1 to 10.2.2.1 uh, .15 something like that. This is my range of subnets. Now, if I, if I want to provide uh, this range sub this this IP addresses to the to the clients, okay. So what we, it means that if if I have only one DHCP server in my in my network, like my this is my DHCP server. If I am using this DHCP server, so I can provide only one subnet at a time. We are not able to provide multiple subnets with the help of one DHCP servers. So now we have a difficulty. I can place three different different servers. So it's cost cost effective. I want to purchase three DHCP servers. It's very very difficult for me to first purchase one one lakh servers and then I can implement DHCP server on that. Okay. Or what I do? I can use DHCP relation concept in that. Relay agent. Relay agent is what? Like imagine this is my uh, uh, this is imagine that this is my simple uh, machine. Okay, I can enable over the DCP relay agent. So what they do? What he do? He he first contact with the DCP server. Okay, and it's uh, downloaded their subnets IP address to them, and then he provide their subnets IP address to the clients. So on this server, we can configure more than one DCP. Okay. Which one? On this? No, the no. first server. On first server, we can we can we can create all those pools. Okay, okay but uh, uh, it gets the information about the DCP server. Okay, so it gets gets the information to their pool and they providing them to the client to the client. So what we have a DCP relation. So DCP relation is a services in in in, in the servers. Okay. For this, what we need we need one service. The service name is if, I, if you want to install DHCP Relay Agent, you first need to install RRAS, Routing and Remote Access Services. Routing and Remote Access Services to install DHCP Relay Agent. On the server. On the server. So like on this server, I can install Routing and Remote Access and on then you can... One, the second one. The second one, yes. Okay. And I, I'm installing Routing and Remote Access and then I can add DHCP Relay Agent on that. It's a it's a protocol or protocol you can say that DHCP related service. So we need to install, we need to add with the help of routing and remote access. Okay. So what what DHCP servers do? DHCP server lay agent provides the IP address for different different subnets. Or you can say that it's 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 also capable capable provide the IP address to the uh, to the remote locations also. If you have multiple remote locations, then with the help of this relay agent, we can provide the IP address to the remote locations also. Understood this? Okay, so this is what we have a DHCP relation concept. Okay. Now, uh, after before this, this, this. Okay, I need to relate this. Now, uh, we need to understand some more things also. Like if you're talking about, we have the option in that, uh, in, in our DHCP server is DHCP uh, auditing. Auditing. Auditing means like if you want to uh, check the logs of the DHCP servers, okay. Like is there any error? Is there any uh, any issues, problems in that? Okay, so we can enable audit logs, audit logging, or enable a DHCP auditing in the DHCP servers. Okay, by default it's not enabled. We can enable by ourselves also yes. manually. Okay. So what happens? They maintain all the logs, warning logs, information logs, which I showing you yesterday. Remember yesterday event viewer with help of event viewer, yeah, I showing yeah, you yeah. so many logs. But like this, also DSCP has their logs also. Okay, so DSCP logs are automatically saves in the uh, in their uh, in their database also. What's the most common issue that you may face in real life? In real life, DSCP server sometimes they are not providing the 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 correct IP address. Like imagine I have multiple scopes. But the DHCP server is not able to provide the correct type of virus. It gives an IP address that doesn't belong to the network. The different one. Oh. This is this is the major problem of DHCP servers in live environment. Sometimes it happens that they are not providing the IP address. Sometimes they happen that uh, the DHCP server providing the wrong IP addresses. Okay, so this is what we have. 
okay so DS, this is the major problems so dsp audit logging is used to uh, it is used used to maintain the logs maintain the logs okay like if you if you want to um, if you want to check the logs or you want to trace something so then we can go for follow this log right. okay now we have a dacp database option also dacp has a database also okay so database means like when you install dacp servers it uh, the dacp folder is automatically created in in, in windows c windows okay in that uh, in that uh, uh, folder we have two files okay number one is dhcp mdb is a file name dot mdb dacp dot dot mdb okay this is the database file of your dacp server Okay, and second one we have second one we have uh, log files, DSCP log files. It uh, it creates log files to every every day basis. Like it starts with Sunday, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and when uh, again Sunday comes, it replaces the previous Sunday log files. Like this, yeah. It 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 take it maintains only one week log files. That's it. It's not more than that. Sunday to Friday, or Sunday to Sunday to Saturday. Like if Sunday again comes, it replace the previous one, previous Sunday one. And the first one, it keeps keeps all the everything. The database file you can see that it keeps everything. This mark address or this IP address. Yeah, but whatever configuration you can do in the in the DSCP server, it it maintains everything on DSCP MDB. Okay, we can take the backup and restore also. So we have the option over there that we have a DACP uh, backup and restore also. Okay, so we can take backup and restore also with the help of DACP backup and restore. Okay, by default it it it, it takes a backup out in the in the same Windows Windows same DACP folder also. It it take it makes automatically one folder name is backup. And it maintain everything in that. You have decide the location also. If you want to uh, take backup to another location, you can go for that. But the by default location is C Windows, the, the DSCP folder. In the DSCP folder, the folder makes automatically one folder it's make. The folder name is backup. With the help of that folder, we can, uh, like if I by mistake I delete, the, delete any pool or any scope. So with the help of restore, we can ret retrieve it. We can recover it. Okay. So uh, we have the option backup and restore. Backup and restore. Understood? Okay. Now, if we're talking about the DACP, two major op uh, options in the DACP is number one is DACP user class. Number one, okay, user class is what? Like imagine now, there are some complications in that. Like imagine I have two departments, HR and sales, okay. Uh, I have uh, I have in HR department I have 50 clients in sales department I have 100 clients 100 PCs you can say that understood mm -hmm. you will understand now mm -hmm. okay like him like I, if I go for if I go for diagram so how it's look like like imagine this is the network I have it splits in two uh, two divisions okay now uh, this is we have a sales one okay I don't have any this is the sales we have okay and we have a marketing guy over there okay this department is, is have two uh, two i have two three departments so what this depart this network is divided into two net uh, two departments sale and marketing i have another another network also you can say that this is also my another network it's also divided into two categories okay over there i can place uh, hr and it guys hr and IT guys, okay, and I have another department. That department we have, uh, you can see that all higher level management persons are set there, okay. Level management person, high level management persons are set to my this department. Understood, these all departments are connected with each other, okay. Like this, we have our switches, routers, and the devices, everything is there. So we can connect all those departments. Okay. 
Understood? Now, now what happens? Like imagine in this, uh, now I just change my color now. Now in this, we have, uh, imagine 25 PCs. I want to divide, provide the IP address in which one have a high level management. In this uh, sales, we have imagine uh, 20 and in marketing, I have imagine 30 PCs. The orange one is a PCs. Okay. And in HR, I have 10 PCs or you can say that 15 PCs. And in IT, we have again 10 PCs. Okay. Understood. Now, uh, I am implementing one DSCP server. Imagine that this is my DSCP server. This is one my DSCP server. Okay. Now, I want to define that. Uh, I want to define different different subnets to every department. Understood. You will understand till now. Okay. So in my uh, so in in my in my this uh, sales department, you can say that uh, I go for something like you can say that it's uh, one dot something one nine two one sixty eight. Uh, one dot one something is running over there uh, to one dot okay. you can go for one dot one dot uh, one dot something one dot one two twenty okay this is for sales okay then marketing I have two dot one two thirty this is for marketing one okay now this is uh, a for you can say that the higher uh, higher uh, level management this is for imagine 3.1225 means 3.25 okay over there also it's a, a 2.30 okay and over there we have 4.12 4.15 this is for hr okay and it1 we need 5.12 i'm sorry 5.12 5.10 like this. This is the range of my HR. Okay. Like this. Understood. Okay. Now of course we are going for relation. It's okay. Okay. We are going for this for relation because we have a different different subnets and all. Okay. Now you can say that uh, what I what I want what user class define is I want that okay if sales depart department goes to take the IP addresses. It's always take this 1.1.1.20. It dot takes 2.1 or 3.1 or 4 or 5.1. 5.1. So what I what I need to do with the help of user class, I can map the LAN cards. The LAN cards to the uh, to the to the specific ranges to the specific department. Okay. So in user class, what I do, I just mentioning the LAN LAN card and their names. I tell that okay if request uh, to this MAC address or this LAN card, okay, you need to give uh, this range. So, between those guys, they, they will be a router or a switch. Yeah, yeah. The LAN card of which device are going to take? No, no, I can go for uh, the system LAN cards, you can say that. PCs. Okay, so I, I tell, I, I map I map the client, you can see that I map the client LAN cards, client PCs map uh, LAN cards to, to the user vendor classes, so to the user classes. Take, uh, uh, or, or I can go for MAC addresses here. For MAC addresses with their names. I tell that okay, this is the MAC address, and this this MAC address belongs to sales department. This MAC address belongs to marketing department. I know it's very difficult to to uh, manage everything. Okay, but in user class, we, what what we can define, we can define a specific uh, LAN card to a specific department. Okay. That they able to they they able when when uh, DCP starts delivering IP addresses. It checks the user class and it provides the correct IP addresses to them. Okay, I told you know we have uh, something very big issue in DSCP server that DSCP server not providing sometimes a correct IP address. So that that is the uh, uh, use of to uh, means to solve the problem user classes. So the LAN card is this one the one that I used to mm -hmm. reach internet. Mm -hmm. So you take the LAN card mark address mm -hmm. and, and map it with the address. map it to the department. So that LAN card that you're going to map on mm. like which device LAN card is it is it the gateway no 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 the system LAN card the pc LAN card you can do. so for each pc you have to yeah it. exactly now it's also have some issues that if i have a thousand pcs uh -huh. 
so it's very next to impossible that I'm mapping all the things. Yeah. Okay, so another one also we have the name is DHCP vendor class. Vendor. Now vendor class works on vendors names. Like imagine I have in my sales I have all HP PCs. In my marketing I have implementing all IBM PCs. Okay, I have HR I am implementing again to some other other vendor PCs. So I just map the vendor name only. Okay. So all the PCs automatically map with the department. Vendor. Okay. Understood. It's easy. Like if I am using five vendors, I only use five names only. That's it. <laughs> Understood. Okay. So sometimes it happens when sometimes Microsoft do anything changes, na. So maybe they have some issues. So they rectify the issues with the help of different different options. Now user class have so many issues. Now after that, they launches vendor classes. They gives the option vendor class. So with the with the help of vendor, because in in company, all you know that. In company, always company um, prefer that they uh, buy uh, the PCs from one vendor only, or multiple vendors. Like they they go for HP uh, Dell servers and they go for client HP. So it's very easy to understand DCP that okay we can define the vendor class and things like that. Understood? Okay. So this is what we have a vendor class concept. Okay. Okay. Now, other thing we need to understand is what happened. Mm, okay. Blank one. Okay. Now, other things we need to understand is is what some more things also. And the one is we have a uh, DSCP policy also. DCP. Policy. A uh, policy, policy based assignments. You can say that policy based assignments. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of policy based assignments over there? Is like we have defined the policies of the DCP servers also. Okay. Like I uh, policy means over there is conditions. Like what I what condition I use? Like imagine in my network I am using uh, IP addresses like uh, 192.168.1. Uh, dot zero to 1.254 you can say that zero is my network id so start with 1.1 to 1.254 these are these are the ip addresses we are using i am using the only else uh, one net one subnet only i don't have different different subnets so i have only one dscp server on that okay now what i need to do i want to define that if dscp server i want to define two things in, the, in this cases number one case is out of this ip address i have uh, two users you can say that I have a laptops users I have a laptops and I have iPhones you know IP phones okay I have IP phones with, with my organization in my network I have two laptops and IP phones I want that in laptop the IP address starts with 192.168 sorry 192.168 uh, it starts with 1.12 I'm sorry, 1.1 1 dot 1 dot 50. Okay, my number log is off. Okay, I want this. Okay, and the and the renewal uh, time of this is uh, uh, you can say that shorter. Uh, sorry, the renewal time of this is longer. You can say that. I want to renew this IP address after 10 days. You can say that. Every 10 days, or you can say that after uh, 30 days. Mm, after 30 days okay and I want to set my iPhone IP addresses when my iPhones take the IP address it the range defined is 192 168 1 dot uh, sorry 1.51 to 100 1.100 and their uh, release time is shorter okay you can say it go for five days after five days my IP phone IP address should be renewed Okay, so we can define these things with the help of DHCP policy. By default, everything, every every lease times are same to all the subnet. By default, like if I if I choose eight days, okay, so it means it it eight days are defined to all the all the subnet. I mean we all 254 IP addresses. If I want to define these separate separate lease times with separate separate durations, so we need to go for DHCP so policy based assignments. Yes. The big issue for me is here how the DHCP server is going to work. 
this is the market that's of the okay this is like if this client comes mm -hmm. it's part of the laptop mm -hmm. and this if this one comes also it's part of the epic vendor one. class i or told you the vendors okay simple okay understood this okay now uh, uh this is what we have in the in the uh, in what in the dcb policy based assignments so it's look like we can do like this also in the policy based assignments okay we can define the policies okay now the last and the least options are in dcp server is dhcp clustering i told you clustering we already discussed clustering Failover clustering, NLB clustering, Hyper-V clustering, remember no? We did Hyper-V clustering. Yeah, we did Hyper-V clustering, right? Yeah. See the video once. <laughs> Over there we can migrate the VM, remember? Ah, okay. That, that's before. Okay. Yeah, because my system uh, memory is low, so that's why I'm not able to migrate it. So I told you that you can migrate with your system. So give 4 4 GPU from. I keep it to memory like uh, live migration. So yeah, live migration. So, uh, so uh, do this practical. Okay, do that practical. So in DSP also we have a clustering. I can, I, can I do it on virtual box because I yeah, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. For what we for Hyper-V, what we need, we need two DSP servers, na? Sorry, we need two servers. Server Hyper-V servers, right? Server two servers. You have two Hyper-V servers, and then we need one SAN. So you have three servers. Give four four GB to every to all three servers. Then you can go for that. You have sixteen GB, na? Yeah. So, uh, uh, for server 2 and server 3, give 4 4 GB. Server 1 is assigning a 2 GB, it's okay. Then I have to create virtual machines on both of them. Yeah. And Before, then. first you need to install Hyper V and failover clustering on both the servers. And then in your DC1, means the server 1 with the, who is the DC, you can install SAN. And you can define 10 GB and 5 GB store, uh, uh, means the launch. Okay. Understood. Now we have DCP clustering also. So we have two types of clustering. I already told you clustering was it providing you the high availability and load balance. Okay. So we have two types of clustering in DCP. Number one is split scopes. Now what is the meaning of split scopes? Split scope means if I want to split the scope in two DCP servers. Okay. Like what I what I do in split scopes. Like imagine. Uh, now my one, I have only one DSP server, so I can provide 254 IP addresses. So time, sometimes it takes load. Okay. So what I do, I can provide two DSP servers. I tell my DSP server one provides only 50% of IP address, 60% of this pool IP address. Okay. And rest IP address provided by the DSP server two, like this. So what we can do, we can split the scope in two DSP servers. Understood. So this this uh, our feature starts with 2008 or uh, R2 onwards. Okay. So split scope is like we have one very very big issue in this split scope. Like imagine if my DSP server one is down, so all my 60 60 IP addresses 60 percent IP addresses down. down. We are not able to use those 60 percent IP addresses. We are able to use only 40 percent. That's it. Understood. So if you have 200 IP addresses, so out of 200, 120 providing by the 120 IP addresses provided by your server one, and rest 80 IP addresses provided by your server two, like this. So we can split the score by default 60 40. You can go for 80 20 also. Okay, you can go for 30, 70 30 also. You can go for 50 50 also. So as per a ratio, you can define the ratio. What ratio you want to work? Understood. Now second one we have a DHCP failover. The same thing if one DCP server is down, second DCP up and provide all the IP addresses. It goes for 100%. Okay, there is no there is no uh, yeah. delay and there is no something or like. Okay, if sometimes sometimes when we go for uh, go for failover, we have the option in failover is MCLT. MCLT. Okay, this is the option when we define DCP failover. What what it what it tell that if my DCP server one is down, like imagine my DCP, DCP server is server one is down. down. So how much time it takes to DCP server two to up and can and run all the things? Okay. So in MCLT we can define the time. Well, you say it's hundred over hundred. So no time means like imagine if my server one is down now. When uh, now server two wait, how much time it wait for upping the DCP server one? Understood? Or not? 
like this like imagine uh, like imagine this is this is what I'm talking about the MCLT MC LT okay so how it's uh, what 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 they do in MCLT like imagine this is my DHCP server 1 this is my DHCP server 2 okay uh, this is what we have a DHCP server 1 okay and this is we have a server 2 this is server 2 and this is server 1 okay now imagine that if I, I, I configure failover on both the servers by like configuring this configured already DCP server role okay DCP failover in, in, in both the servers like if everybody what happens if my DCP server one is down okay if I'm configured I'm uh, MCLT over there in the clustering like imagine I can go for uh, uh, I can define MCLT time is 60 seconds 60 60 seconds maybe I'm able to write it <laughs> <laughs> 60 seconds so what the DCP server 2 did he waits till 60 seconds to take over to uh, maybe after uh, before 60 seconds it's up it waiting for DCP server 1 to up oh, okay. till 60 seconds if it is not up so after 60 seconds what happens DCP server is up and then go for providing the resources okay. now in, in your failover we have two concepts one is standby and one is active like like this like if if uh, if you if you go for this like this so this this server is by default active you can say that it's active one and this is the standby one this is the standby one so after 60 seconds what happens this standby goes to automatically to active yeah mclt mclt tells that after what time you need to up how long it has to wait before taking like if server one will come up mm. then, you take then you can go for that how long it takes to wait it it waits okay so we can define the uh, time over there so, the so by def one, yeah also, okay so what about the first one that you said you said 100 over 100 100 over 100 means like uh, if my server one is down so all the ip address all 100 percent ip address managed by the server two okay. in the end split scope if if we have a 60 percent over there Okay, and 40% over there. So what happens in split scope? What happens in split scope? If this server is down, so my 60% IP address is finished. We are not able to use those 60% IP addresses. But it's not like then in your failover. Understood? Fine. So this is what we have in uh, DHCP clustering. Okay, able to understand these things? Okay, so now let's start the practical. Okay. That is what we have DCP servers. So I minimize everything now. So I go to my server now. My client is not going to the same right. Okay, so now I am in my server one. And I'm going to install I think we already installed me, right? Me, right? DCP server. Uh, no, I haven't installed DCP server. Yesterday I installed a DCP server yeah, yeah. for WDS. Yeah. Right? See, the DCP server is already there. Mm -hmm. And tools. We have a DCP server. So I think yesterday we already installed DCP server, right? For WDS. You know how to install DCP server? But I come again. Uh, if we can come again. Okay, please. I come again. That's why I remove everything. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know some. I first remove it and then we can start. You can install anywhere, okay. okay. The JCP server, okay. You can install anywhere if you have a member server, you can install it, okay. Right now, I'm installing, I'm doing everything in the, on my DC, 
Okay, so if you have a different servers, you can install DHCP servers on different servers also. But remember, you need to log in with the domain admin, domain administrator. Not only administrator, you need to find the domain slash administrator. Okay, now I am removing my DHCP server once and then we can start. Then we can install again.
I guess he. I'm just going to install DCP server role. Okay, it's a role. Okay. Okay, so I just click on uh, add rules. Okay, it's refreshing. Refreshing. The server manager. Now it's refreshing. Okay. Add. Now click on next. 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 Now we can go for DCP server. Okay. This is the role. Okay. Now. Okay. Okay. DNS already installed because it's a DC now. So ADU DNS is already already installed. Click on next now. Uh, click on next again. This is the overview. Click on next. Restart if required. Okay. Click on yes. And then click on install. So automatically, shall I just take over there? Now, meanwhile, I just start my client. Okay. So I have my client. It's already started. I just log in with my. Yeah, do an administrator. Okay, this is the client. Okay. Some users. Where? Oh, no, no, it's okay. Client is already member of my domain. So I just check now uh, whether the DCP server is properly giving the IP address or not. So I just check how I'm showing you how we do the practical. Meanwhile, I just paint and mentioning there this is my client. Otherwise, we Okay, you can see that the DCP server is installed. Now we can go for DCP authorization. So just complete DCP configuration, click on this. Okay, now you have a DCP post installation configuration wizard. Okay, over there we can authorize DCP server. Click on next. It's automatically taken my DC, my domain name and username. Click on commit and you can see that because it's already authorized previously. So that's why it's showing you right now it's failed. Okay, previously I installed now. Uh, DCP, DCP, and then I remove it, and then I again install it. Okay, in the same system. That's why I'm showing you like this. Okay, now click on close. It's already uh, authorized. It, it, it's okay with that. Click on close now. So now go. To, like, how do you do to, like if you install something to be sure that everything that goes along. Like if if you go uh, again same server, uh, like if you install the same server on same server, so it's taking the previous settings. Okay, if you if, if you go like you can go for fresh uh, different server or you can uh, install you can go for installation again. If they don't want okay. you to take the previous configuration, so how? No, it's not like that. Like if you if you install the same services on same kind of server, so you take automatically taking the previous configuration. Okay. Let's click on install now. Uh, click on tools now, and we have a DCP server on that. Let's click on that. Okay, and you can see that we have a DCP server. So this is my server name, server one dot this, and we have a IPv4 and IPv6. Two options. We can see that automatically the scope is created. So I just delete it because we previously I created the scope. I just delete and we can go for fresh ones again. Okay. So I just delete the scope. Now it's look like this. By default, look like this. So you can expand it IP4 and you have expanded with IPv6. So if you have a IPv6 options, you can go for IPv6. You're using IPv6. I'm using right now IPv4. I just click on IPv4. Right click and we have the option new scope and multicast scope. I'll click on new scope okay now go for this is my 
you can say that pool 01 i'm getting one pool one scope so i give the range over there is this 192 168 uh, one dot starts with uh, 50 and 192 168 one dot ends with 70. okay my ip address is i think so we are using this now uh, ip config yeah i'm using 1.1 series okay so i'm using 1.1.70 now simple click on next now now you want to define the exclude range so i defined 192 168 1.50 to 192 168 1.69 i excluded i already get 70 ip address only because i have only one ip address now all are excluded and okay now simple click on next now we have a eight days lease you can extend up to triple nine days click on next now you want to activate the scope now click on yes now the router ip address if you want the dns is automatically taken because this is the dc so it's automatically the dns now click on next we discuss about wins later for the upcoming classes and all this you can just understand the dns is automatically taken over there the domain name and the ip addresses now if you want to activate the scope now you want to uh, activate the scope later also like imagine you just create the scope only right now you're not able to use this scope or you don't you don't want to use this scope right now you just just, just just create it just click on no i will activate the scope later you can also this option or if you want to use this scope right now you just activate the scope right now okay a simple click on next now and click finish so you can see that the the range of this we have address pool address pool is defining the range like 50 to 70 is the range and 50 to 769 is a excluded one so you can see that it's a cross over there the lease is not there right now there is no leases okay so let me check i go to my uh okay this is the client Client zero one. This is the client. It is okay. This is my client. Okay. Now I need to go to ncpa.cpl. Okay, and I just set the properties. And go to IPv4 and I IP address obtain automatically. You set this. I simply click on OK and OK. Okay, now you can see that it's taking the IP address. If you go to status and go to details, you can see that 170 is taking automatically because 5269 is excluded. Okay, so if you go to the server, then you can see that if I refresh this, they give me the lease. Okay, if I go to, if I open this lease, if I just, okay, I just double click, okay, it's not opening, it's showing you that the IP address you defined is 170, okay, the, de the, sub the system name is this, the desktop name, which we, which we provide the IP address, the client name, and the lease expires is 25, because it's after 7 days, it's after 8 days, right, today is 28, 25 is the expiration date. Okay, understood. Fine, so this is the lease duration we have. Now, if you want to reserve this IP address, you want to reserve this IP address also. You have the option C, add to reservation. If you want to reserve this IP address for the client, the specific client only. Or if you want to change the IP address, you want that, okay, I don't want, they want to, uh, to provide IP address 170 to my client. I want 65. Okay, so where you go, I have a reservation options we have. Reservations. Let's right click on that, we have a new reservation option. Click on reservation. This is for client one. Okay. What IP address you want to use? See, I'm using the exclude range IP address also over there. You can use the exclude IP I can use you can, I, I can use exclude range also. Okay, so I can go for 60 imagine. 60 is the excluded one. Okay, I can use it. Now I need to define my client MAC address. So I need to open my client. So my MAC address is double zero zero C29 something. It's not copy paste, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's see. What is copy or paste? No, I don't think so. It's copy and paste. I need to return it over there. No worries. We return it. Zero uh, C. And then we have 29ADE1. 29ADE1. And the last one we have 18. 18. This is the MAC address I'm mentioning over there. 
right now I'm using DHCP, so we can go for DHCP. Boot P is also there. We have a one one service also Boot P. It's previously used by used with the with, with previous with DHCP before DHCP you can see that. Okay. Now click on Add right now and click on Close. You can see that the one reservation is there. In the in the reservation, what we have we have DNS server this and this is the domain name we have. Uh, this is a reservation we already defined with for for my client one. This is the reservation we have. So now this PC is using the new IP address. Yeah. Now I'm going to uh, the client one. Now it's all, all, already have the IP address one one seventy. Until now, where it's it's still Feb five. So what I need to do, I just release and renew the IP address again. So disable level also the one one uh, one thing you can go for that, or you can go for command also. Like if you want to remove the previous IP address, the command is IP config release to release the IP address. See the IP address is 000. Now after that we have renew to for for new IP addresses. Yeah, you can go for lease renew also. You can go for enable disable also. I have two ways. So so. Yes. Okay, let's see this See, 60 now. Okay, now you can you can see over there also in the graphical mode also in details you can see that 60 is there. Now if I go to my server and I just check once the leases. So if I refresh once you can see that reservation is active right now. Okay, so now two is to reserve. You can go. Uh, by the way, you did unlike when it's already has an IP address. Mm -hmm. Uh, click double right and reserve. Yeah, you can go for that also. Okay, like like right click also we have the option to add to reservation add also. To reservation. Okay, you can go for like this also. Or you can go for reservations. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the reservation. So we can we can uh, reserve multiple IP addresses you can see that like this. Understood? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have the scope options. Just click on scope options. We have the same thing. Configure options, the DCP options which I have told you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the DCP options, these are the DCP options. Like now, I want to set the router IP address. Imagine, okay. So right now, I, in my in my lease, there is no router IP addresses in my pool. So if I define the router IP address, you can just check the router and you can define the uh, the, the IP address of the router. Like imagine in my case, my router IP address is 192.168.1.200. Imagine, I just click on Add over there. So now, when it provides the IP address, they provides the router IP addresses also. Like you can see that if previously they're not providing the router IP address. There is no router IP address. See the default gateway is blank. Okay. Now I just go to mentioning there. Okay. Now let's see whether they go for router IP addresses or not. See, it's all automatically added the router addresses in reservations also. Now you can see that I go for again release in you. Okay. And let's check. Release. Renew. Now let's see whether it takes the Default gateway. See, you're checking the default gateway right now. Yeah, default gateway one to two hundred. Yeah. So go for details again. You can see that two hundred also. So like this, we have configured the uh, options, DHCP options also. Okay. Understand? So you can define this option uh, right now. If I choosing the scope options, it means this option is only for this scope only. I configured the uh, router IP addresses for this scope only. Like if I have multiple scopes. If I want to configure this option to all the scopes, then you can go for server options over there. And I had to go for over there, yes, server options over there. Configure options and then you can set the router IP address over there. For another scope. For every scope. For all scopes. Understood? If I See, right now what happens? I I use this option to configure the scope options, right? For this option is for this scope only. For this 191.0.1.0 pool one scope only. If I have pool two, pool three, pool four, pool five, five scopes, I want to define all this option, this router IP address to all five scopes. Okay. Where I go to go, where I go for server options. It's like the diagram that you just did. Yeah. Like the same network, but it's like different. Yeah. Uh, sub Subnets and all that. And yes, they, yes. Are, they all have the same. Same router IP addresses. So I need to go for server options. Understood? Okay. Clear? Fine. Now you can see the properties of this scopes first. As right click on that, we have the option. See, the first option is display status. Statics. Mm -hmm. Display statics means if I click on this, they're showing me total IP addresses. I use one. In use zero and available IP addresses one only. Why they're showing me only one IP address? Why? Because 
okay. we have rest are all all are, all are excluded okay. so they're not counted excluded IP addresses okay. if I remove this range exclude range if I go to address pool and remove this exclude range I delete this range now okay now all are included exclude is there is no now if, if you see the status Statix they showing you we have 21 IP addresses now one is uh, one is used and 20 is left available and as you can refresh this also continuously okay now after that we have the another option uh, we can go for deactivate the options okay we can deactivate the scope also if you if you like imagine that you don't want to use this scope right now you can deactivate the scope also if you click on deactivate so you can see that yes you can see that the down arrow over there okay. red down arrow is there it means the scope is deactivated now this scope is no longer used if you want to enable again, so right click on that, we have go for active. If I click on active, the data is gone. Okay. Now we have option properties. So you can see the options. Like if you want to include, uh, extend the range, you can extend the range over there. Okay. Uh, you, you can see that the, if you want to uh, increase the lease duration, you can lease the, increase the lease duration over there. You have the option unlimited option also. If you go for unlimited, you can go for unlimited also. Understood. Okay. Now we have a DNS option also. Like we can, when we read DNS, and then we see the option. Okay. And uh, this is a DCP. If you want to change the IP address client to DCP or boot P, you can go for boot P and DCP or Okay. So if you click on boot boot P, so the lease duration is 30 days by default. Okay. Fine. So right now I'm using the DCP only. Okay. So this is what. And you can see that see the delay also like if you if you have different different subnets if you want that if you if you, right now there is zero ms millisecond delay there is no delay right now if you want to set the delay that okay uh if, if it is switched to the sub, different subnets it take takes some time some delay they so can mention over their delay okay, to give to assign the IP address if you could like delay one over there one milli one millisecond means so it takes one millisecond, one millisecond to keep, keep give the second second go for second subnets or not okay especially with the delay with the which the dcp server distribute addresses so how much delay you want so of course i don't want any delay i want immediately okay so sometimes uh, if, if my traffic is slow and my bandwidth is slow so i mention the delay also over there if if my network is slow if my uh, bandwidth is slow yeah buffer so i want a delay also so when it provides the IP address, it has it takes that much time to providing the IP address. Okay. <coughs> Understood this? Yeah. Okay. Now if you click on server, so we have another options. Like if you click on servers, we have uh, um, unauthorized and authorized options. You can see that we are already an authorized server. If you want to unauthorize this server, just click on unauthorized. So what they are asking you remove authorization for this server from the directory will cause the DCP server to stop responding to client request. Are you sure you want to do this? If you click on yes, it means your DCP server is not responding anymore to the client. Okay. Understood. Now we have the backup option also. If you want to take the backup, just click on backup and you have C. By default, it goes to system 32 DCP and the backup folder is there. I don't want to take the backup over there. I want to take the backup on my desktop imagine. I go to my, uh, I will see the desktop option. Yes, desktop. Now I make a folder. It's for DSCP backup. Okay. Just click on enter and then click on okay. Okay. Now as you can see that the backup is created on the, I just minimize this, minimize this. You can see that the folder is there and the backup is automatically created new. You have seen this is the database file of them and this is all the other files. This is the database file we have. Okay, fine. So now imagine if I, uh, by mistake, I delete this. Delete this pool. I delete this pool. Okay, now I want to restore it. So just right click on that, click on restore. And you need to go to desktop. In desktop, this is the, yes. Let's restart the service and then you can see that all things are back. If the backup is properly sure. happened, the database has restored successfully. Okay, you just expand it and you can see that the pool is there, everything is there. Okay, like this. Understood? Yes, sir. 
you will understand these things now yeah. okay okay now you can see that we have a policies options also we can define the policies you want to click the new policy you have the policies option which I told you know policy that I want that my laptop users laptop no. machines they have 30 days duration and the, the iPhone they have five days duration so that we can different. define yeah we can define over there you can see that it's a policy based assignment which we read DCP policy based assignments so you can define the policy name over there is policy one you can say that and then you can define the policy or the condition is and or or and or is it's a uh, <laughs> it's a logical statement and and or or okay so you can add the conditions which condition it can be a vendor class which condition you want with the help of vendor class or user class or mac address which condition what type of condition you want to add client identifier okay. fqdn name relation information what what specific criteria you want to choose over there so the mean of add and or add add and and or which you, you show me previously which one and or, or. Yeah. and or, or is a is a gates you can see that it's it's a gates like your system works on uh, operation gates so always go it's a binary gates you can see that binary language gates so always use or yeah we can and and means plus or means this or this okay like this so if if you go for or so you click on add and then you can define the criteria okay which condition you want to use equals to or not equals to and I say, okay, if, if I choose a vendor class, or if my vendor class is for IBM, then it's equal to this. Then they give the IP address. If it is not class, not equal to IBM, it's not able to give the IP address like this. Okay. So this is the policies we have defined. And one thing also is there is we have a filter options also. Like I want that okay, I want allow or deny. Like I want that okay. Uh, I just enable deny option right now. I just enable it. I filter it. I want that okay. My client one is not able to access DCP servers or DCP server not able to provide IP address to the client one. So I give the client one IP address. Like if if I go for MAC address, like I have a MAC address now already. I'm mentioning over there uh, in the reservation. So I just go to properties. We have the this is a MAC address. I copy this MAC address and I paste it to deny. Okay, and I have it. Understood? Yeah. Done. Now in deny, we have a MAC address like this. Now, if I go to release new again, so what happened? It's not getting the IP addresses. Release. See, there is no it's not able to take media unoperational. No, sir is trying to take, but sir is not able to see the people is there. Mm -hmm. But if I if I just remove those with this MAC address, if I move mm -hmm. to allow, oh, move to allow. Okay, so I need to allow enable allow also over there. Okay, mm -hmm. now you can see that. I just run again. Control C, renew. Now this time it takes. See. Yeah, it's not there. Understood. So we have two practical left after this: split scope and failover. Split scope. Split. 
scopes and failover dscb cluster dscb clustering okay so uh, after lunch we do this tactical okay so you have 15 minutes if you want to revise it again but if you want to do this things in your laptop you can go or we can just check the problems if you have any problem you have a problem i just pause the video right here huh? <laughs> so you just right click on that we can click on uh, the sample so right now we just starts with uh, dscp failover okay so um, okay it is wait okay, now <coughs> excuse me now you can see that uh, we have a scope over there Okay, we already set the scope. Okay, for failover, what we need, what we need to do, uh, I am, I have, I take two servers. Okay, one side I configure everything. Second side I not configure anything. I just installed, inst I just installed DSCP server only, service only. That's it. On second server, I am not configuring anything. Okay, understood. Okay, so what I need to do, I just first, uh, you can see that I already configured uh, server one. I am in server 1 right now. I already configured DSCP on server 1. Okay, you already configured server 1. Okay, now I am going to my server 2. Now over there, I just install uh, DSCP service. That's it. I don't want to do anything on that. Okay. The same as in the, uh, the, in the clustering and all. Okay, so let's go to start. I go to uh, server manager and I just install. I am going to install simple DSCP server services only in server 2. I am configuring anything, everything on server 1 and it's automatically synchronized to server 2 as well. Okay. Does the DC has to be in the cluster? The DC has like must Yeah, be the problem is that now uh, now it's up to me. Like if 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 you to call about DC, mm -hmm. so we are not able we are not uh, allowing DC to uh, add to be the cluster. So you you can you can do yourself with server 2 and server 3 in that case. Okay, fine. So, uh, so in that case, you need, to, you need to run all three servers and one client also. Right. I don't have that much RAM, so that's why I go <laughs> for everything in the server. Okay. So, what I need to do, I just uh, going to install the service DHCP in server 2. I previously removed this IIS and WDS. They're showing me the only the result only over there and then after this I am going to start install DSCP. Okay, now close it. Now we need to going to click on add roles and features. Then simply click on next, next, next. Now over there we have DSCP server in roles. Click on add features. Simply click on next, next, next. Enable automatic restarts. Yes, and install. Something. Recording is running. Okay, so you can see that the DCP service service is configured. Now I'm going to uh, so DCP server is installed. Now I'm going to uh, authorize my DCP server. Okay. The complete DCP configuration. Yeah, complete. Right now I'm doing everything on server two. Okay. Click on next now. Okay, I just take automatically my username and username and domain name. Commit. You can see that authorized DC server is done. Click on close and close. Okay. So I did everything in my server one, server two. I just installed servers to the DCP servers and authorized DCP server only. That's it. Now I'm going to again to my server one. 
this is my server one okay i am launching again go to tools and i have the option dscp i open dscp again in server one now what i need to do i want to enable dscp failover so i just see see there i just right click to my scope expand this right click to the scope click on click on configure failover okay, this is server one this is our one. Yeah, this is our one. Okay. So <clears throat> if you see, this is our one. Okay. So I I just right click to this, my scope configure failover. Just click on it. Now this is the introduction. Configure failover wizard is there. Okay. Now if you have multiple scopes, you can un uh, you can select all this over there. If you have if you, if you want to uh, choose only one scope, I want to configure uh, uh, failover on a dedicated scope. So I just uncheck this one. They are showing me all the scope. You can select the scope and you can go for that. If you want to enable all the scopes, just click select all. Just check this select all. Okay. Click on next now. Now they are asking you your partner server name. So I need to add my second server. Server so 2 in that. 2. Yeah. So yeah. I add server. You can see that I have two servers. Server 1, server 2. I just click on server 2. The IP address is 1.3. Simple click on OK. Now it's adding. Now if you not install DCP service on, 2000, on, on server 2. So that gives you the error over there. Okay. Okay, now you can see that server 2 is added over there. Yeah. Let's simply click on next. Okay, now see. See there. Relationship name is server 1 and server 2. Okay, now you can change the name of name as well. It's a default name. Yeah, it's the name of your, uh, you can say, yeah, you can say the name of your failover relationship. Okay, now uh, maximum client lead time is 1 hour. Mode is load balance. Load balance means if you go for load balance, it's for it's for NLB. Right now we are going for failover. We can choose hot standby. Okay. okay. Hot standby means uh, <clears throat> the role of partner server is hot standby. It means yeah, my server two is is on hot standby standby mode. Okay. And uh, uh, we just simple. I, I don't want any authentication. I don't want to go any authentication and all. We just simple click on next now, and then you have this everything for this okay mode is hot standby uh, switch over interval is disabled so this is i think so uh, we have this okay so you need to understand three things mclt is this is one by default the time of mclt is one hour oh, it's too much. yeah it's too much okay you can you can less this also okay yeah. fine so by default is the maximum uh, client lead time is mclt is one hour wow. by default is one hour okay so <clears throat> uh you can you can go to you can say that it's called for minutes zero. so zero I, I don't want to uh, means I, I, I don't want that it's uh, hold it okay immediately if my server one is down second server is automatically up okay then simple I just simple uh, uh, okay I need to give the time something about minutes okay so I give one minute okay minimum is one minute okay because if I go for zero zero so they're not showing me the next option over there they need to go for one minute okay Simply click on next now and now click on finish. You can see that all the scopes are automatically added in the partner server. All the uh, scopes disabled and everything is are, are successfully configured. Click on close. Now you can see that if I go to my partner server, my server 2, this is my server 2. I just click on start and try to open DSCP Windows admin tools. Over there we have DSCP option. Click on DSCP. You can see that now. Now you can see everything is automatically synchronized with this server also. If I expand this, you can see that scope is automatically created over there. I'm not getting anything in server 2, but still it's synchronized with them. Once I configure failover in my server 1, the partner server, server 2, is automatically take all the updates. So we don't have any way to verify if it's well configured. Which one? Like failover, basically failover. Yeah. We don't have. Okay, this is server two. This is server so two. Server two. Yeah, that's why I told you. This is server two. So, so automatically it shows me server two also. Once I configure configure server one, it automatically shows me server two. Okay, it's automatically take all the configurations. Okay, now we can check. Now, if I go to my client once, if I go to my client, this is my client. 
and if I check right now it taking one it, it has already has an IP address for this client first I release the IP address and renew again because this this time I don't have a reservation okay so let's see what IP address he gets and where he gets instead of server 1 or server 2 okay so I just open uh, CMD over there and I go for IP release and renew okay so right now first I just check the IP address so I got sorry IP config I got I get already 160 1.60 I go for slash release and then renew now let's see where he gets the IP address see it takes 60 IP address same same 60 IP address where he gets if I go for IP config slash all so where he gets he gets with DSCP server 1 1.1 1 .1. so 1.1 .1 IP address is for server 1 okay now what I do I stop the service I'm sorry I stop the service on server 1 I, I am in server 1 right now I just right click to the DCP server go to all toss and stop I stop the DCP services on server 1 okay I stop this see my DCP server is stopped now now I go to client again okay and I go to again release and then renew now see where he gets the IP address he get the same IP address but where this time from server 2 yeah from server 2 the IP address of DSCP server is 1.3 and that's what, that is what we have a failover clear okay now I'll showing you the split scope okay so uh, remember one thing that we not able, we not uh, uh, means configure both the both the uh, modes in same in same time. Failover is that I can use split scope. So if right now I'm using failover, so I need to first remove failover. Okay. We can't use data. We can't use both the both the things on same time, both the clustering mode on same times. Okay. So what what I need to do? I first start this first start the service. I first need to remove all failover configuration and then we can go for split scope okay so I need to go to uh, right click to this scope and we have deconfigure failover just click on deconfigure click on okay okay the action this will remove all the scope which are part of failover relationship okay so it's completely deactivate everything now okay so now if you go to my server 2 this is my server 2 right now I just refresh once so you can see that there is no scope is there scope is deleted automatically in server 2 right now I am in server 2 see now I go to again to my server 1 now I am going to configure split scope concept are same we need to install server 2 uh, only DSCP service and can and, uh, and authorize the server only that's it okay so I just right click on that click on advance we have the option split scope now I have and yeah, I, I want to divide my scope between two servers. Let's click on split scope. Okay, it's for load balance. You can say that. Okay, so the DCP split scope is there. Click on next. Now they are they want to ask my partner server again. Let's click on add server. Server two is my partner server. Okay, now it's taking. Click on next now. Now they are asking you what percentage you can give. You can see that uh, uh, this is the host server. Host server is my parent one, the server one. Okay, so I can give uh, 60 to parent and 40 to second one. Understood? Okay, so it starts with uh, uh, 50 to 61. 50 to 61 IP address provided by the host server and 60 to 70 provided by the added server. Okay, simple click on next now. Now, DSCP delay of delay is I don't want delay so it's already zero there is no delay click on next now and this is the summary what we defined you can see that server 1 provides between 60 to 62 to 70 IP addresses so this is the exclude range this is the exclude one it's been he not able to provide he able to provide only 50 to 61 okay and server 2 is able to provide 62 to 70 click on finish now see it's automatically 
added all the things so on the server 2 if server 1 goes down server 2 will take over all the IP over the 62 yeah click on close now you can see that now see if i go to address pool so they showing me 50 to 70 is the range 60 to 70 it's a block range he's not able to provide this okay if i go to my server uh, server 2 and i refresh it once you can see that the scope is there okay but but in, in the split scope it's the scope is uh, deactivated okay you can see that the red arrow is there well, i need to active the scope also okay i'll go to pool you can see that it starts with 60 to 70 till 60 it's a block range okay for server 2 so now i'm going to so i going to my client now we can check i go to again release and renew now you can see it takes again 60 okay and this 60 it takes with the dscp server one okay now i'm going now what i need to do i just go to my yeah and go to my server one and just stop the service okay now go to my client now again release and yeah. now this time he takes ip address between 60 to 70 because my server 2 range is between 60 to 70 so what if if all those ip addresses has been taken by some clients and one of the clients of server 1 Hmm. comes and get an IP address so it will not be able to get an IP yeah, address yeah exactly please again now go for server 2 in that case okay but server 1 is down so this client can cannot work anymore yeah it has to wait server 1 to come yeah. back to get yeah, the yeah, IP yeah. address yeah for that case like if you if, if they renew the if, if, if they if a client is go to renew the IP address mm -hmm. so it goes to if, if server 1 is not there it goes to server 2 in that case no, so no, the IP address changes like I'm saying so for now server 1 is down Assuming I was connected to server 1. Yeah. So, like for server 2. Now, for till 8 days it's running. Uh, okay. After 8 days it have issues. After 8, After eight, eight days, days it's again go for a Dora process. So, it goes for server 2. That in that case, in that that time which server is running, so they give the word. Okay. So, assuming at that case server 2 is still running, but server 1 is still down. So, you go to server 2. But server 2 has given all its IP address. So, they are not able to give the IP address. Okay. Okay. So, now IP, IP config slash all. So you can see that. It's access it takes 62 right now mm -hmm. and the it's, it's get, get with the sure. DSCP server 1.3 it's a server to it okay so this is what we have failover and, Fail over and, and split scope 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 okay split scope okay able to understand these things now yeah okay so this is what we have a DSCP failover and split scope so these are the uh, these are you can say that these are the uh, services provided by the DSP servers okay understood so what you need to do you just do once all these things okay okay I just stop this recording now because DSP is completed today okay so we start DNS tomorrow okay you have some time till now so you can do practicals okay with this complete DSCP, do practical complete complete DSCP practicals. Okay, I just stop this video now.